Hi guys, so today I'm going to try out the new Tonic Studios Premium Card Making Magazine issue 14. Um, I'll have a link to it. It's available now at scrapbook.com. That would be affiliate link, which means I'll make a small commission if you were purchase items to those links. Um, it was available on Tonic. It sold out like within a day. <laughs> it always does. Um, and it's on Scrapbook right now. So if you want to check it out, it'll be there. Um, I took the outer cover off because it usually has two boxes. Um, the US one, because it has a bonus die that they put in the, like this, you know, and then put this in the other box. But I already did an unboxing of this, but we didn't really quite open it up. And I'm not real sure 100% what I want to do with it. I did buy the bundles. That's why I like getting it on Tonic's site because they do include <clears throat> like weekend bundles or other bundles that go along with it. That, um, oh, this is really stuck down. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I noticed that's different. Um, usually this has its own um, package. Let me cut this. This is not working out. Hold <laughs> on. Usually the die is in its own little package like this, and then the extra die, but this time it's just in here with a lot of sticky stuff. This is odd. All right, here we go. I'm gonna take that off, obviously, and put that in a storage pouch or something. But I love this stencil, it's a nice size. I don't know if you can see that. I mean, the length of the stencil is uh, two, four, six, six inches or so. Um, or you can use it this way couple inches in the width there. So cute. And then we have this little guy. Um, again, the outer circle, this inner circle. This little, aw, <laughs> little cloud. Tiny, tiny little pieces on that. Um, it reminds me of the Crafts Companion um, pop-up that they put out not too long ago. I actually have them here. I haven't tried them yet, but it's very small like this and then it has like a few little things that you can kind of pop in there uh, to make it look adorable. Um, but that's what that reminds you of. Then we have this little step set here with like the little houses, fly high, dream big, best dad, find your wings. And then we have the little hot air balloons, just like in the die over here. The little helicopters and airplanes. And then we have the extra, the bonus die set that has, you know, balloons. It's this large set. Let me try to get this out. I'm not sure if I'm going to be using this one today. I want to, but in my mind, I have something else. Well, we'll see. <laughs> oh, this is a big boy. So yeah, I mean, that makes like a five by seven, I'm sure. Yep. Like that would completely cover up a five by seven card front. Um, with the Ferris wheel and a little roller coaster. That's so cool. Hello, Summer. Oh, so cute. <laughs> I love that. And then the little bunting or penance or however. Look at the little light. Oh my gosh, totally reminds me of Disney, uh, their pier out there. Okay. Um, and then the papers. I kind of went through those real quickly. I do, like I said, have the bundles from Tonic that I picked up. So there's lots of things in here I probably won't use. But um, we have drops. I have... Um, shimmer powders, which is just fun to have. Um, all the different cardstock that go, coordinates back to the, um, oopsie. What's in here? I think that two paper bundles and I picked up both of them. I mean, look at that color palette. Just so pretty. I love it. And the different types of paper, everything that's in here. And then there's still another stack. I think the other one's more of a classic cardstock. Yeah. So it's just a plain card that goes back to the papers and things that are in here. I also have, and I don't know if I'll pull it out, but the die set that cuts like the sentiments. Some of them, like some of these are new, like that's a new shape, but like I think it cuts the circle, it cuts this shape, it cuts this one, but I'm not sure. Anyway, um, it's just an extra die set that you can pick up on Tonic. I don't know if I've seen it on the other sites, but so cute that it has all these different things here. And I suppose you can run through your scan and cut. I don't know anything about those. Um, look at the paper. I just, it's so adorable. Hmm. I might go a different way than what I had in mind. I don't know. We'll see. Oh, that's so cute. I love that. Anyhow. All right. Well, let me go through my papers. Let me get some inspiration here from the magazine and we'll put something together. I'll be right back. Okay. I think I'm gonna make like a four by six card. I'm going to take some inspiration from this little guy. I think it's very cute. So just to cut the apertures and then we'll decorate it however we want. I am going to cut this paper, even though it hurts my heart. I guess what you can do is scan this if you wanted to. But there's two sheets of each one. It's just, ugh, on the back of it. 
has these little things. And I'll probably cut from this bottom section because I don't know that I would use this top section anyway. I mean, the bottom section. Um, I mean, you can fussy cut these things. I don't know. I'd rather use this as paper pieces like that I'm going to add to a card than these little guys, if that makes any sense. So I'm going to cut this. So I want to make it kind of long. Oh, something fell and it sounds like metal and maybe it's one of these little... No, I guess not. Okay, I want to make it like four by six. This is eight and a half by 11 paper. So this is actually a two size paper. And a lot of times from tonic, it's a four size. But either way, I'm going to cut a four by six card. So it's a little bit wider than the normal mini slim lines that I make. Um, just for whatever reason, I just, I, you know, I'm looking at this. It looks like maybe it's a three inch circle. So I, I need some space. So I'll cut this down to four by six, meaning eight by six. <laughs> so let me see if I can... Oh, you know what? I, I, I was going to do a whole review of this guy, but you know what? I'll just use it right now to cut my new tonic Tim Holtz guillotine because the other one cuts crazy anyway. And I want to use this. All right. So, oh, look at it. You can put your little paper clips in there. Um, it does have the extra extended, um, I don't know how to get it out. Do, do, do. We'll figure it out at some point here. Um, either way, it opens up like this. I do like that it has like, ooh, whatever is going on here. You can mess with those. It seems very nice and stiff, like tight. The Crafts Companion one never felt tight, and then people always tell me, oh, you have to tighten up the, you know, the bolts and stuff. And I've done that, and it's still pretty loose. A gal the other day says she nicked her finger because it, it'll come down on you. Like I can show it to you right now, actually. <laughs> And so what I do is I told her I rest it on my forehead, which is even worse, but okay. And even if I tighten it up, it'll still come down. So I go like this and I put my head in the way to keep it up. And I put my paper so I can use both my hands. Not safe guys. Um, and yes, you know, I've tightened these things up and it doesn't matter. And then now it doesn't even cut nicely anymore. So it's just these like frayed edges. And this thing is heavy. What's in here? <laughs> Press to release. Oh, I see. Okay. Hold on. I should probably pay more attention to what's going on here, but I don't know what this is. <laughs> Press to release. Oh, I see you. Okay. So, this is tucked in there, right? And you press it here, because it's like a little, um, it just catches. And then you pop this into here, right? When you need more space and pull that down. So, a little different. Um, I'm just wondering what this is. It's also, it just says handle. Oh, it's a handle. Duh. Okay. So we pull this out. And I didn't realize, I didn't even notice that it doesn't have a handle. <laughs> so we're going to put this on. Um, so there's like a little notch here that's going to go underneath. There's like a space for it right there. So I'm just going to pop that in. That's kind of interesting. So I guess you could take that off if you want, right? I don't know. All right. So I said six by eight, right? Let's see. So six inches. Okay. I was going to say it kind of ends off here, but down here you can see the guides for six inches. So that's five and a half. And then six would be um, oh, right at the end of that black area is six inches. So always hold this down on any guillotine. Okay, it sounds nice. Nice and crisp. Because the other one was cutting nice and crisp too initially. So I'll just keep using it and you guys can, you know, gauge from there and then to eight. And hold that down. Ooh, feels good. I don't know about, you know, uh, removing it and putting it back every time, but that's how they set it up. But hey, not bad. I guess that just clips in there. I kind of like to keep it up, but I guess it's probably not meant for that. <laughs> anyway. All right. So there's that. Let me put this to the side. Actually, I'm going to use it again in just a minute, but I just wanted to try that out for you guys. Okay. So we have our card base. And then I need to cut a piece from here. And I'm going to cut it so that it's three and three. No. Yeah. Three and three quarters by um, five and three quarters, I guess. And I'm gonna remove the whole page just to make it easy on me. What happens is sometimes I'll bring in something and I'll cut a piece off and then I'll keep going from there, but I am gonna 
tear this out. If you want to just remove the staples and pull it out that way, that's good too. All right, so I'm going to cut this down. And then whatever other paper I need, I think I need some white cardstock too. So I'll be right back and I'll tell you the sizes of all that. Okay, just going to finish cutting those pieces. I probably should just put everything away. Feels nice and sturdy. That's really great. And so on that one, what they did is they made two apertures. And I wonder the size of that card. I guess I probably should have read it because I'm just looking at this. Again, this is really <laughs> stuck down. Um, I'm going to peel this back, I guess. Yeah, this definitely needs to go into a pouch or something else. Just be careful. I'm just going around kind of pulling this as well as I can. One there. So I'm going to have to cut one as high up as I can that doesn't intrude too much. And then another one like down here. Hopefully this works. <laughs> I may have made it a little bit too small. So, um... I'm just going to run this through twice. Right down here. And then as far up as I can without it intruding. Okay, so I'm going to run this. Actually, you know what? We'll do it together. In the marquee and see what that looks like. And the reason, too, is sometimes I just cut when I go to make it, like, to do this is because it shakes the camera. Otherwise, I would just stay here, to, you know, it's pretty quick. Just, I don't know how many people want to sit there and watch the camera shake. Oh, I cut this piece of paper just smaller than the uh, three and three quarters. Cues that excess part. What I love, look at this. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then it has embossing, so if you want to do that or if you want to run it through with the foam, if you're using the marquee, I'm just going to leave it. It's fine. Um, I'll put this one up here. Very thin. I probably should have gone a little bit bigger. Like on this guy, I probably should have gone five and uh, seven eighths, you know, by three and seven eighths. And then this guy could go a little bit smaller. But I did five and three quarters by three and three quarters. And then this one is five and five eighths by three and five eighths. So it's just a little bit smaller than that one. So maybe in this video, what I wanted to do is show you guys. I've you know, Spellbinders, whenever they have a die that doesn't have a second die to it, like this one does, it has the background, but this one doesn't, um, They and they do paper piecing, what they tell you to do is put a piece of foam adhesive, and then you put, pop in your pieces. And I've talked about that before, and people haven't seen it, and they're like, what, what do you mean by that? So I think we'll do that today. So let me just move this. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> How thin that is. So yeah, maybe a little bit more in the height. And then this one kind of goes around there. And that's basically what I was looking at. A lot of clouds. <laughs> but we're going to pop this up a little bit. But yeah, check that out. Okay, I'm going to fold this in half, of course. I'm going to score it at um, four inches there. So it's six by four. Um, and let me think about which of these guys we're going to cut. And let me get rid of this stuff. And I'll be right back. So I just literally grabbed um, some of the papers that were in that one bundle. And I think this will be cute. So I grab Lemon Luster. We have Candy Floss, Glitter, and Pearl White. And so this will be popped up. I already stuck that down just to have that done. This will be popped up a little bit. And it'll give us a little bit of height there. And so we have these guys. And then we have the little bows even. So uh, the bows I'll probably cut in some like other color. I don't know. But for now, what I'm going to do is take very little amounts. Because I'm going to do two kites and one of the other guy. So, I'm going to cut out two of each of these on both of these since we're just going to do two. So I'm just going to give myself a little room here. I'm going to cut two of these out, save the little inside pieces. Okay, and I'll do the same thing with the pink, the candy floss. So those two kites will be, you know, kind of coordinating. And then um, with this guy, I think what I'm going to do with this guy is... Do one background of the candy floss, and then the topper will be the uh, pearlescent card. And when I do that, what I mean is I'm going to do both of these and glue them, you know, tape it down, run it through. Okay, so I'll be right back. As I'm cutting, I want to show you, I did use both of these layered together. And this has its own edge. So basically it cut, and then it made this little thin edge, which I might still keep, because to be honest, I would have preferred 
like I'll show you right now when I cut this out um, it's gonna be missing that, that pink edge is gonna be sticking out around this but the kites aren't like that so you know I try to keep things the same but you know what are you gonna do let me see here cute it's very cute I love the style look at that Adorable, I need to pop that one little hole out. But you see how's that pink edge? But I suppose if I really wanted to, I could bring this in and glue it all back in. Or you can even cut another one out and make this black or something so it does a whole black edge around or however you want to do that. But I think I'm going to piece that back on. <laughs> so I just want to show you that because it's a little bit different. And then, again, I'll run these through. I'll be right back. And I'm so silly. You actually only need one of the kite. Well, I'm going to make two kites. If you're making more than that, then you need more than one. But I need the insides of one and the actual kite of the other, you know? So you only actually need one of each. Let me put these out and pop this out. And then from the red glitter card, I'm going to cut out the little tiny bows that go on the kites. But we don't need that quite yet. So I'm going to bring this back here. I'm just kind of eyeballing this. So I'm going to glue these guys down. Oh, come on. I'm telling you. <laughs> I should use my tweezers. Let me just pop this out. There, that little surface tension I get from this cutting mat like makes it impossible to pick things up. All right, where's my glue? Here we go. And so I'm going to use this outer one only because it, if this, you know, I guess it doesn't matter because this one has its outside. However you want to do it. I'm just going to use them both. I don't know why. <laughs> so I'm going to stick this down. And then I'll add a little more glue. And I'll stick this down. Such a pretty design. Okay, so that's that. And then we're going to decide where we want things to be because we need to put these guys down so that I know what's going on. So, like, I think I'm just going to put this guy over here. I'm just kind of eyeballing this. He's covering up some of the clouds, but that's okay. Over here. And then our little kites, where we decide, decide to put them, like I'm going to put, like, let's say this one here. So what I'm going to do is take some foam adhesive, and I'm just going to place it. I'm not going to place it on this. Let me put this to the side so you can see better. Just a little bit, because I know that's a small design. And I'm going to put it like here and see if I can catch what I need to catch. I tell you, every day there's these little... <laughs> they're gnats is what they are, which I don't think... Um, there's no only gnats out here. Anyway, so let's say if that one goes there, I'm going to put a little bit more. And this is just how I'm doing it. Actually, I should put this... Well, no, that's fine. So hopefully you see what I'm doing. I'm placing that right on that foam. So now when I come in here and get these pieces, it's just going to piece in there. Now, of course, it's not going to be... It's going to look good. It's just different, you know? Maybe I'll put another little piece right under there. Just to help hold that up. I'm going to take them back off it now to make it easy. Of course, you don't want it to be visible, so we're just trying to tuck that back in there. You could also stick it to the actual, um, to this, you know what I'm saying, if you want to stick it on here and then put it down so you know exactly what you're doing. But it seemed easier to me to just put it on my surface and then go from there. And it's pretty sturdy, you know, it'll hold on to them. 
So that's kind of what Spellbinders does a lot of. Um, I've never actually done it because I prefer to just like, keep it flat on a piece of paper if I'm going to piece it this way. But for this one, we kind of needed it to be up in the air there. Pretty cool, right? Okay, I'll do the same thing for this other little guy, like over here or something. Um, obviously, it still needs to have something behind it, you know, to hold the pieces. And um, I'll be right back. I just want to show you, you know, I like show everything. I stuck it on here. You see it went all the way down there. And then you can come in and kind of snip away. That's just another way to do it. A little bit different from the way I did it the first time. I think it depends on the shape of what you're trying to do this with, right? If it was a little more difficult, it'd probably be easier to put it down and then go from there. Okay. Oh, I'll be right back. I was already moving along and I didn't come back. Hold on. I'm going to put a little glue there and a little glue here. And we're just going to pop on these little tiny little bows. And of course, you can put these at the end of the string. That would be also very cute, like a few of them. That and that. I'm going to wait for that to set up because now I'm going to turn it over. I did put some dimensional adhesive on the back just to stick it down, but um, I'll probably put a little extra, actually. Um, if you wanted to put a piece of acetate behind there, then you have a shaker, right? Super easy. Just cut your piece of acetate about the same size as this and glue it down. But um, I did leave it very thin margins here, so if you're going to shaker this, you got to make sure that you have enough height or you know, area. You don't have to do two apertures. I just thought it was a cute design. So, um, okay, so let me let that set up for a little bit and then I'm going to put a little bit more um, of my tape foam adhesive here and here and here. You know, in and I'll the meantime, be right I will stamp the sentiment. So, if you stamp on the classic card on this side, you see it's very textured. On this other side, it's not so much textured. I'm just going to stamp on this extra piece and I'm going to do flying by to say hi. Oh, you know, I was going to do red glitter around this after I cut do the sentiment. Hold on, it's dirty looking. No, it's fine. Um, huh. Eh, I'll just stamp it in black. But it'd be cute to use colored inks. I always, like, don't do that. <laughs> you know, I forget to use colored inks when we're doing sentiments. So cute. And I'm just going to cut this out. Again, I do have the dies that cut the different uh, sentiments, but that's usually from the book itself, the magazine. This one, I'm just going to cut it by hand like I like to do, just straight across, and then add some of that ruby red glitter, ruby ritz, I guess is what it's called, um, around it just to mat it, and I'll be right back. Okay. So, again, I added some more dimensional adhesive on that, and I'm just going to eyeball this. Hopefully, I center that pretty well. It has a little margin of the other paper sticking out behind it. And if you don't like that look, then don't do that. Just, you know, make them exactly the same size. Cute, it has a little dimension, a little something there. And then I have this here flying by to say hi. And again, I like to just use wet glue on something like this. I eyeball it, I cut it, I put it on here. Um, and since it's a wet glue, I can kind of play with it until I think it's exactly in the right spot. You know, if I feel like, oh, it's a little too much this way or that way. I can probably trim this a little bit, but that's okay. Where are my scissors? So again, I just do this by hand. <laughs> But you can definitely use a cutting tool. And I'm just going to stick that down. So since there's so many clouds, I don't mind that I covered up a lot of the clouds in the die cut because I have all the clouds in the background paper. So I just want to put that one there. Actually, you don't want it there. Yeah, I guess so. Okay. And that's that. Hopefully you guys like uh, that quick card tutorial. Uh, it's just some die cutting. Um, you know, maybe I'll try and come back with the other one because I do really like that frame on that 5x7. And then everything that's in there, it's just so sweet. Very summery. Very cute. Again, really nice for probably um, scrapbook pages and things like that. So, all right, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, I'll see you at the next one. I'll have the links there again to scrapbook.com if you're interested in this um, card making magazine. Bye now.